I'm gonna talk about the bones that make up the pectoral girdle. There are four bones, two clavicles, the right and left, and two scapula, a right and left. Uh, the pectoral girdle does exactly what a girdle do, would do, and it supports. And these bones support the upper limbs as well as um, serve as attachment sites for the muscles that move the upper limbs. Let's talk about the clavicles first. They're somewhat elongated bones. Uh, these bones are going to attach to the manubrium of the sternum as well as the scapula. Um, the clavicles run horizontally um, and they help brace the scapula as well as limit the, the movement that the shoulder joint can make. All right, to be able to tell, you have to be able to tell me which clavicle is right and left. And an easy way to be able to determine that is to look for these points, okay? This point right here. This point is always on the posterior side. So if we turn this around, okay, this is the anterior side and you can't really see that point. Flip it, here's the posterior side. We see this little point and the point is always going to go downwards, all right? This flattened end is the sternal end of this uh, clavicle and it articulates with the manubrium of the sternum. This somewhat S-shaped end is the acromial end and it articulates with the acromion process of the scapula. So this will be medial, this will be lateral. If you see the point, it's posterior and the point is always downwards. So this is the left clavicle. Here's the sternal end, so this, was go this is going to be medial. Here's the S-shaped chromial end, this will be lateral. Point is in the back, posterior side, and it always goes downward. This is the right clavicle, okay? Let's talk about the scapula. To be able to determine right or left, you need to know what's anterior and posterior first. If you see this large spine, Okay, this large projection called a spine, this is the posterior side. If you flip these bones over, you'll notice that they're this convex, smooth surface. This is the anterior side of the bone. So here's the posterior side. The point, it's a, the scapula are somewhat triangular shaped bone and the apex of this triangle is always going to point downwards and the spine will be uh, on, on the top. The spine always goes away from the midline of the body. So this is the right scapula. And because this is going away from the midline of the body this way, this is the left scapula. Let's talk about some structures you need to be able to identify. The first is the spine. I've already mentioned it. Here's the spine. This con, um, <clears throat> this concave surface above the spine is called the supraspinous fossa, supra meaning above, uh, above the spine, and it's a fossa, so a, a depression, supraspinous fossa. And when we talk about muscles, we'll, I'll mention a muscle called the supraspinatus muscle. Guess where it lies? It's going to be right here in this depression, the supraspinous fossa. Below the spine, this depression is called the infraspinous process. Infraspinous fossa, sorry. Infraspinous fossa. The spine, if you travel up the spine, this projection coming off is called the acromion process. This is the acromion process. This process that is um, anterior and inferior to the did I say acromion process? To the acromion process is the coracoid process, mm -hmm. okay? The acromion process and the coracoid process serve as attachment sites for muscles that move the upper limb. They also help form this cavity called the glenoid cavity, okay? And you can envision that some sort of ball-shaped structure could fit into this glenoid cavity, and that ball-shaped spherical structure is going to be the head of the humerus. So this glenoid cavity is where the head of the humerus articulates, okay? Um, the acromion process, again, articulates with the acromial end of the scapula. All right, and that's it for the pectoral girdle.